Hi everyone and welcome back to another week of painting. This week I'm going to paint something very big, well quite big. Um, it's going to be a two part or three part again, I hope you don't mind, but I just really like to get kind of down to the nitty gritty with um, painting and techniques. Sometimes it's nice to just sit and take your time. Wouldn't you agree? So I'm going to paint uh, on a big canvas here behind me um, a scene from Yellowstone National Park. It's um, a very well known scene. It has been painted a couple of times by lots of artists. So uh, I thought I would try it, see how I get on. I have a nice photograph that I found of the scene. Um, lots of blue, that kind of a thing. Lots of mountains, lots of fog and mist. Let's practice some of those techniques and see how we get on. I hope you like it. Um, I will be starting my Zoom live tutorials um, in the next few days. So I will be contacting you, um, those of you who are interested. I have a list of names. I will contact you as I'm going. I will probably do three or four per, per session. Only because I have a lot of requests and a lot of names and a lot of people waiting to get this um, live Zoom tutorials. So I will probably do a group setting, okay? Small groups, just so I can give everybody a fair chance and a chance to get a tutorial, okay? I hope you don't mind. Um, so look, grab your stuff, let's go and have a bit of fun with this. This is going to be a good one. Um, I'm really excited about this one. Don't go anywhere, I'll see you in just a moment. Okay, here we go. This is my canvas. It is, let me check for you, just to be exact, just to be sure, 75 centimeters by 50 centimeters. So in inches, 30 inches by 20 inches almost. <clears throat> now, I have a quick sketch sketched out here, okay? Now you should see the reference photograph there somewhere. I'm not sure which side it's on, left or right. Um, it could be on the bottom there. I did a quick sketch. I put some tape across my horizon line, okay? Just below half, we'll say, just to give me a clean line. And I just kind of sketched loosely. I made a couple of mistakes here and there, um, but in general, it's just a very, very loose sketch of the hills in the background, okay? Now, isn't that photograph gorgeous? I'm gonna try and capture that misty morning kind of a feeling, okay? Now, I have some turpentine here, just a little turpentine with some linseed oil, just a little drop of linseed oil. I have my paper palette, which I'm going to use. Normally, I would use something like this, okay? When I'm painting myself, I would normally use something like that. But <clears throat> in terms of you being able to see the colors, I don't think you'll be able to see me mixing very well on this. Would you agree? I think it might be very difficult for you to see me mixing all these different colors. So I use for my tutorials a paper palette, just a regular paper palette, all right? Um, I just put a few colors out because I'm just focusing on the sky today and some of the hills. So I'll tell you what I have on my palette. Titanium white, Naples yellow, I might not need it. Um, cobalt blue, some alizarin crimson, some phthalo blue, or French ultramarine would work as well, um, and some cadmium red. They're the colors I have now for my sky today, okay? <clears throat> now, let's start. Um, the sky, you can see, it's just gradually getting lighter as it comes down, but it's a very rich, warm blue. Now, actually, French ultramarine would be perfect for this, but I don't have it in my box. Um, I tend to stick with Perusian blue or Thalo blue. Um, so I'll just work with what I have, okay? So let's take some cobalt blue. Now, you can see the mixing here, okay? That's good. It's nice to work on a big canvas for a change, isn't it? Cobalt blue, a little crimson. Now also, I'm using a large, very soft brush, okay? Cheap, large um, brush. I do have my stubby brushes, but that's, you could use a stubby brush as well, but this is still a little bit soft for me to do this sky. So I'm gonna leave this until it thickens up a little bit. So I'm just gonna use this nice, thick, soft synthetic fiber brush, all right? Now, into that, let's take a little white. Let me cut my palette properly here. So a little bit of thinner as you go along because as you add the white, it's going to get very thick. So as you're adding white, take a little drop of turpentine as well, okay? 
Now I have a nice mix there. It's a little bit on the runny side. So I'll take a bit of white and add that to it. That will thicken it up nicely. Take more cobalt blue. I'm leaning more towards the cobalt blue for now. Little hint of phthalo. Little hint of crimson. What you want is a nice warm blue. Now let me just stand back for a moment and take a look at that. Um, by the way, you can see all of this, can't you? You can see all, I'm just making sure you can see all the canvas. Yeah, you can. Now I'm gonna darken it slightly. I'm gonna take some phthalo blue, some cobalt, and little crimson, okay? And I'm gonna put that nice rich blue up here. And I'll go around the hills, little touch of white in here, just loosely. You don't have to be exact when going around all these hills, okay? I can kind of pick out the shapes again later. So with that nice rich color, take a drop of thinners, thin that just very slightly. Little hint of pink. I think the little hint of crimson warms it because it's a very kind of a warm, color and certainly as it comes across it gets a lot more pink doesn't it now let me dampen the brush again i did prime the canvas once but i don't think it was enough it might have needed an extra prime so it's a little bit dry it's a little kind of on the dry side you know what i mean the paint is sort of kind of soaking into the canvas slightly but it's fine now as it comes across i'm going to add start adding more crimson more white and it's going to start getting a little bit on the pink side. So let's just go along there and fill that in. Soften it across. Okay, I'll dampen my brush just a little. I'll take more crimson. Plenty more white. And it's getting quite thick now again, so I'll take a tiny drop of turpentine with the corner of my brush, okay? Just a tiniest little amount, just to soften it ever so slightly, that's all. Now I'll take a bit more white in that, because that's a little bit on the pink side for me. Let's just go down, bring this colour right down. Go along the top of the hills again, just very quickly, look, very, very loosely. I'm going to soften that in. All the way along, look, soften it right up. Left and right, left and right. Now we have a lovely gradient coming in there now, don't we? Isn't that lovely? So I'm gonna just give my brush a quick dab on some tissue, just to keep it clean. Um, it's nice every now and again, just to give your brushes a little wipe on some tissue, just to keep it clean. So coming across now again, like so. Just fill that in all the way across with that nice light blue colour. Soften it in like that. And I can tell this is going to be a fun tutorial. It's going to be a nice one. It's, I hope it's going to turn out nice. I really do. Because I'm going to take my time with this. So more titanium white. Um, I'm tempted to try a bit of cadmium red. I don't know what you think. Uh, I'm I'm tempted, looking at the reference photograph kind of closer up, I'm tempted to try a touch of cadmium. I don't know why, but I can almost see a little hint of cadmium red in that sky. So let me try it. Put a little hint, tiniest little hint now, the tiniest, tiniest little hint, okay? Um, as opposed to the pink. The pink makes it very sort of wintry. Now, I know it looks wintry on the reference photograph, but... I'm just thinking kind of a slightly on the warmer sort of side. Let me take a bit of white and put some white in the mix just down there. I just took the white directly from my palette, look, and put it right onto the canvas. Because it's nice and pale off in the distance there, isn't it? So now we have a nice sky going from dark to light. Or from light to dark, whichever way you prefer to call it. I'm going to soften all this paint together nicely now, okay? And it's actually quite a thin layer. Believe it or not, it's very, very thin. Now, I might carry this over just a little bit here. 
just to tell the viewer that it goes right behind the mountain, you see? Right behind the mountain like that. Now, how is that looking? <clears throat> I might lighten it slightly, just along the bottom edge, along the bottom over those hills. So I may take a little bit of white, a hint of crimson, and just go over these very loosely look and soften it in these brushes are very good for this these soft brushes because they don't leave any brush strokes on the canvas so it's fantastic for this you see no brush strokes whatsoever how's that let me go up and try and soften that a little bit more and i may make this darker as well it's a little bit darker on the reference photograph i think would you agree? Okay, let's try some more cobalt blue. And let's get some phthalo blue. A little hint of crimson just to warm it slightly. And let's try, let's just try this now and see. Because I think we could make this very, very dark up in that corner. So let's go for more cobalt. <clears throat> One little um, a tip as well, okay? When using cobalt, cobalt is a very soft colour. Um, even though it looks very dark on the palette here, it's actually a very, very soft colour, so it doesn't go very far. So it's not very strong. Um, when using cobalt, add a little bit of French ultramarine or phthalo blue or something with it. That will give it more power. Because cobalt blue on its own, it doesn't have any strength, any power whatsoever. It just disappears into the paint completely you see it just fades away and it doesn't has an, it doesn't have any staying power so that's why i chose to use phthalo blue a lot of the time um along with cobalt just to give it a little bit of strength to understand now these are things that you will kind of learn as you try different colors i had a hair on my canvas there let me just get rid of that but yes trying different colors will help you understand how they interact and how they work together. Okay. So I have a nice dark side now over there. I may bring it across. Let me just get my photograph up here again. I may bring it across a little bit more up on top. Just up here like that. Okay. And then we're going to do some clouds. We're going to focus on putting in a couple of nice clouds right across this lovely sky i've never been here in this area but i would love to go i really would looks like a beautiful area doesn't it um okay let me have a look i think it needs a bit more strength up here up in the top right hand corner so let's add a bit to this uh, soften it down Okay, now that'll do fine. I think that's fine. I'm going to move on now and start doing some clouds, some nice clouds. I'm going to put this brush down and I'm going to take, I guess, my small stubby, or my, my large stubby. This is my biggest stubby brush, okay? And what I'm going to do is just start flicking some white through those clouds. First of all, I start on the left. I think we have some nice little wispy clouds kind of going across over here. So let's just go directly into the white with a dry brush, okay? A dry brush. We don't really need to dampen this brush because the canvas is fairly wet as it is. Let's just go in and pick up some white, okay? Plain and simple, titanium white on the tip of your brush, look. Nice and easy. And let's just go up and flick some clouds. Now I'm creating the direction of the clouds by flicking them backwards. So they're being blown across the sky like this by the wind. Okay, uh, let's go up here and just put a kind of one or two sort of soft ones. Again, flicking across. See, I'm just kind of catching the canvas and flicking it backwards. Okay, now when the brush gets dirty like this, give it a wipe on some tissue. So you can then pick up some nice clean white again. Now it won't be spotless, but you know, you understand what I mean. Let's go in here, let's give this a little bit of shape. 
a little bit there. I will soften a lot of this in, okay? So don't worry. In fact, we'll soften it in now, just so I can show you what I mean. Uh, let me get a soft makeup brush. Now this is quite used, you can see it's very dirty. So I'm thinking it's almost time for a new one. I think I may have to go to my wife's makeup cupboard and have a little look, see what's there. Let's just soften these in with this very gently, flicking it backwards. Okay, just like this. They're nice soft kind of wispy clouds up in the, off in the distance there, okay? Now, there, nice and simple, wasn't it? Okay, I'll give my stubby brush a quick dip in some turpentine and dry it on some tissue just to clean it up. Let's go over and tackle some of these, okay? Let's get a little, um, I'm thinking a little pink, Okay, a little touch of crimson, and lots of white. Because they're not pure white. I can see there's a bit of pinkness to them. And I don't want to copy, copy this exactly now, okay? So let's just go and put a couple across there like that. Soften them off. Okay, clean the brush again. Then go back into your paint. And we go up like that. See? Just sort of dab it along, like so. Clean the brush again. Let's go back into some pink. Little hint of pink, little bit into white. Nice bright pinky color. And let's go put a couple of dabs around here and there. Uh, a couple of flicks out that way. A uh, couple of there, look, coming along. Keeping it nice and simple again all the time. Little bit of pink at the back there, just to show a bit of light. Little bit up there. A bit of light on these ones would be nice too, wouldn't it? Okay. Um, a little popping over here from behind that hill. All right, just like that. And I think we're nearly finished our sky already. I want to keep the sky nice and simple because the focal point really is all these lovely hills coming down, isn't it? That's really kind of our focus. So let's just soften some of this now in just here and there. Okay, I'll flick this one outwards, you see, giving it a little bit of direction. Soften that one down. Now, how was that? I may put a little bit of shadow in some of these clouds, okay? Just a little bit. I can see a bit of shadow there. So I'm gonna mix some, say a blue, a little crimson, little touch of cadmium red. And I'm gonna put a nice little shadow just here and there on some of them, okay? Bit more crimson. It's a bit on the red side, those shadows. All right, just kind of popping in and out, in and out. Nothing too fancy again, okay? Just a little. And I'll soften these very gently. Now, at this stage I would take a brush, okay, a small brush, <coughs> excuse me. I have a nice little brush, look, a little flat brush, nothing too fancy. And I may take a little Naples yellow with some white, giving me a very bright, rich, um, sunlit color. And I'm gonna pop some of that in just on some of the clouds to show that the sun is catching here and there. Okay, you see? 
Now you need to be careful because you have blue hair as well, so it could go green. Just remember, do not mix too much, all right? Just little amounts at a time. And don't kind of soften them in too much. Just put them on and leave them. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, a lot of the mistakes that a lot of people would make is that they would put their paint on the yellow and they would mix it and mix it and mix it too much and then it goes green. So the trick I find really is just to add a little dab like this and then just leave it, okay? And talk gently to the canvas. Talk gently. Don't shout and roar and give out to the canvas because that creates bad karma. Isn't that right? It creates very, very bad karma on the painting. You don't want bad karma in your painting. You want it to feel good and happy and refreshing. All right? Now I'm going to take a little bit and I'm going to put a little bit around here and there. Okay, just like that. Then I'll take another soft brush because my brush is quite dirty there now. I have another little handy little makeup brush from my wife's makeup box. Let's just give these a slight little soften just here and there. Okay, I won't go crazy. Just a hint. Now, I think that's okay. I'm happy enough with that. Hmm, will we move down and start doing some of the hills? For this I'm going to use my regular large stubby brush and we'll get away with just using these same colours again, I would think. So let's just have a look at what we're doing here. Um, I'm thinking I might have to lighten this a little bit more just to give a really nice contrast between the hill and the sky, okay? So I'm just going to take a clean brush. Let me just find a nice clean brush. I think this is fairly clean here, I think. So, you know, sometimes you think the brush is clean, but then when you put paint on, you put on a canvas, you realise that there's previous paint left over in the thickness of the brush here, and it goes onto your canvas. So, sometimes um, I can get it wrong. Now, a bit of phthalo blue and white. I'm just going to go down here and just push that in there. I just want to get a nice light in that background, okay? And soften it up. Now that will do, really. I could even stick with this brush for... No, I won't, I won't. I'll use my large stubby. Large stubby brush. We have a nice, rich, plummy kind of a colour down the back here. Let's take some cobalt blue, some alizarin crimson, a little phthalo blue. <coughs> And I'm thinking, should we use a little white in this? No, I don't think we need white in this at all. It's a very dark, plummy kind of a colour. Let's go and follow this line as best we can, OK? Fill that in. I do have a little bit of turpentine in this now as well, yes? Just a little. Um, OK, it goes up. And as it comes up now, I'm going to warm it slightly as it comes up. So I'm just going to get roughly the point at where it kind of stops up there. And the thing about some of these hills is that some of them kind of merge in together here and there. And that's the tricky part because you're trying to make them look like separate hills, but they're kind of merging together as well. So that can be kind of slightly tricky. Uh, sometimes, now let me just go up here, get that in, okay, just very loosely, that's all, just very, very quickly, and I'm going to pull it down in that direction of the hill, okay, always pull your brush strokes down in this direction, you see, follow the lay of the land, that's kind of what they say, as a general rule, now, at this stage, I want to get some nice mist down here, so I'm going to put this brush down, and I'm going to take another brush. Let me find a nice small-ish kind of a brush. Um, I have a very, let me see. I have a very worn brush here now, okay? Very, very worn. And I'm just going to go right into some white. 
and a little of the light blue, the phthalo blue kind of a colour. And at the bottom, in fact, all you can see over here is a bit of mist, okay? So let's just soften that in here first. Okay, like that. Soften it across. Very gently. I'm hardly touching the canvas now with this, okay? Like that. See? I'll take a hint of phthalo blue and lots of the white. Because the phthalo blue with the white gives it that very luminous sort of a colour. That's what I find. Um, and of course, you know, these are things that you're going to learn all the time as you're going. And I'm going to put some mist down in the bottom as well. I'm going to take some of that phthalo blue with some of the white and create a nice, perhaps even a hint of pink as well. And create a nice warm. Um, now, if you look at the photograph, okay, you will see we have a very bright line going across here, don't we? Where the water is reflecting. We don't want to go light against light. We want to go light against dark. So I don't want to lighten this too much. Do you understand? Let me get a bit more phthalo blue and crimson. And I'm just going to go around in circles. Look, just very lightly around in circles. I may take more phthalo blue actually in this. And a hint of crimson. I want it a bit more on the bluey side. There, that's better, I think. Now, I'm just going around the circles, small circles, and I'm softening this in here and there. I'm creating kind of misty areas, then there's some not so misty areas. So you can see now we're getting these lovely little swirl marks. You can go down a little bit, but try not to go down too much. I'm just keeping this as soft as possible, okay? And then, you see, when you've that done, you can take a soft little brush and you can see that's not soft now that's starting to go hard so i need a nice little soft blender brush that's what we need a blender brush soften this down soften it together nicely and we just go along like this now and concentrate on one hill at a time okay now isn't that a lovely little hill we have off in the distance isn't it wonderful Okay, let's move on. I'm going to go on to this hill here. I'll worry about all the little highlights and stuff later on, okay? Not to worry. Let's just move on to this next big hill. This is slightly darker. So let's go with some phthalo blue, some cadmium red, a hint of crimson. And this is slightly redder now. This is, there's a lot of red in this mix, in this color, okay? So let's start with a nice, rich, warm plum. And um, we go up here and let's just start putting it in. A bit more red, I would say. Okay, it comes down. And it comes up like that. Then there's this dark ridge across here, isn't there? comes across over like that. We have a nice light area here, so I'm going to leave that for now. And then I'm going to, as I come down then, I'm going to go back into my phthalo blue with some white, okay? Now, not too bright, not too bright, but much lighter than what we have. I'm then going to just soften that color in as we come down. Now you can see all of this okay, yes? I hope you can see what I'm doing okay. Soften it down like that. Pull some of that pink down. And this is where I kind of get starts getting cool here now. You'll see what I'm going to do, okay? I'm going to try and create these hills separately, but at the same time merge them together with a little bit of mist at the end. So pulling it down, that gives you the impression of the hill falling downwards. All right, let's go back to our other brush, little rough brush. Take some phthalo blue with a little white. And then I'm going to kind of merge that hill with the one next to it just slightly, look. Bring some of the mist across. So you can see some of the dark side of the hill coming down, but then it disappears into the one next to it, look. Isn't that lovely? 
So we have a nice little separation there then. Okay, let's just soften a bit more of that misty colour in there like that. And then I'm going to take a small pointy brush, okay? Nice small, small, little pointy brush. Let me find a nice one here now. Okay, this one will do. A dry little pointy brush. I'm going to take some, um, some white and a little of the phthalo blue. And I'm going to put that in as snow, little ridges here and there. Okay, now I may need to get my little balancing stick for this. Let me get my little stick, okay. This is one that I just made with a little bit of timber and some masking tape. All right, very handy. So you can just lean it across like this. And then I'm just gonna go with a couple of little ridges popping here and there just to create the impression of some snow resting on some of the ridges in the hill, okay? Just a little tiny wiggle here and there. Does that make sense? Okay, um, put a bit more as it comes down here, just a little. All right, and one or two. I don't want to kind of overload this with a lot of this kind of stuff, so I will leave it at that, okay? Now, you can see where I kind of scraped my canvas by mistake. That's fine, let's just take our brush. Soften it back in. Done. Disaster avoided. Right here. Back to our palette. I'm going to take a bit more of the white and put more white in down there with a hint more of pink, okay? So down at the bottom, a bit more light and a bit more pinky. All right, there. Now, now, that's not too bad, is it? We still have a nice dark when we take off our masking tape or our clear tape. We'll have a nice dark line against the brightness of that water. Okay. Now, do you want me to zoom in slightly to this section? Let me zoom in just a little bit there. Because I think you might like to see this in more detail, yes? Uh, that way. There. Okay. Nice light colours over here. I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to get my medium stubby, okay? Nice medium stubby brush. And I am going to go for a nice bright colour. Warm, a warm kind of a colour. I'm going to put more colours on my, my, my palette here, okay? I do apologise. I'll take a little burnt cyanide, okay? Tiny bit of burnt cyanide and a little burnt umber. Where is my burnt umber? I know it's here somewhere. I have it. Little burnt umber on my palette. And I think a hint of black, okay? A hint of lamp black. Tiny, tiny, tiny amount. And let's now make a nice color for this. So I'm gonna try and keep it so that it's complementing the rest of the painting. So let's go into this plummy colour. Let's take a bit of Naples yellow. That goes a kind of a, a strange grey kind of a colour, doesn't it? So I'll take a hint of burnt cyanide now in that. Let me have a look here now and see what we're doing with this. Take a hint of burnt umber perhaps, because it's a bit browny, isn't it? Let's go and fill that right in there, okay? In fact, let's take some burnt umber and a little crimson, all right? Burnt umber and crimson. And we go and just put in some of this, these little, <coughs> excuse me, these little ridges. Okay, now I'm going to make a nice warm plum again. I'm going to take some crimson 
Um, I'm going to take it this time a little hint of black, uh, a little hint of the blue. Now I want this nice and warm, okay? So lots of red in this. And then I'll take a hint of Naples yellow. I'm going to just soften a little bit of that color in here and there. Soften it up. All right. And I may even put a little hint of that color through this as well. So by using the same colors throughout your painting, then it's really helping the composition. Okay. I think that's what you need to remember. I'm going to put some nice plum through some of this here. Okay. Let me just get some more red and that. It's a nice kind of a plum color. Then we create some nice mist up here. So I'll take my soft brush now and I'll just soften some of this down. And then I'm going to get a small, let me see now, I'm going to take a small brush. I'll go back to the small round brush that I used earlier. And I'm going to put some nice darks in up here. I'm going to take some black and a little touch of phthalo and a little touch of crimson, okay? So it's a very rich dark colour I have here now. I'm just going to refine some of this. Just kind of bring it back nice and dark, understand? And I'm going to create some of the lovely kind of ridging that we have up here. Okay, and let's go over here and create some nice shadows and some of these hills. Okay, let's put some there. I'm going nice and red now with this nice and warm, okay? I know it's a little bit cooler on the photograph, but I'd like to kind of go a little bit warmer with some of this. Then I'm going to start putting in some lights. Some nice bright lights here now to really bring this mountain alive, okay? Um, let's go with our small brush, let's take some Naples yellow. Okay, go down here and show you. Some crimson. Just a tiny amount of each, okay? Naples yellow and crimson. Just those two colours, I think, is all we need. And we create some nice, warm, bright, sunny colour up here on this hill. Look at that. Lovely. Lovely, lovely colours. And we create a bit here. Look, nice. And bright. Just kind of, it's capturing some of the lights from the sky. Okay? Not too many now, but it's just capturing a few. And a couple here. Like so. I'm just kind of dragging it down with my brush, that's all. And let's create some nice light along here. And we have a nice bright light in that ridge just up on top of this. We have a nice light kind of coming along here. Sort of acting as a separation, separating colour. So I'm going to leave that for a moment and then I'm going to go and create some nice mist again. Nice bright bluey kind of a mist. And just soften it in here and there, look. Isn't this wonderful?
Now you could go even lighter again if you want. It's still quite dark, that colour. You could add a bit more blue into this. Let's load that to kind of soften off. And I'm just going to soften it very, very gently then, here and there. Now, I hope you don't mind these longer tutorials. Um, I just really wanted to paint something like this. I think it's a fantastic scene, but I want to do it nice. I don't want to be kind of rushing through it, as I normally kind of would with some of my scenes. So I hope you don't mind and I hope you're enjoying this. Let's take a little bit of black, a little bit of burnt umber. I'm just going to start putting in a couple of shadows here and there on this side, okay? Because just to make it a little bit more prominent, do you know? Give it a bit more presence in the painting. So I'm just going to kind of go down and give it a couple of little suggestions of little ridges, rocks, that kind of thing. So just, it's so far away, you don't even know what these are. It's just a suggestion of the very rough, rocky surface. That's all. A little bit more brown, a little bit of black, and we can go up and start giving this a little bit of detail. Uh, a couple of darks here and there. Okay. Okay. How's that looking? It's not too bad though, so far, is it? We're getting there, albeit nice and slowly. We're taking our time. A um, little bit of snow along there. All right. We could suggest perhaps a little hint of snow up here. Okay, just a touch here and there. Soften it down with your finger. And we leave this mountain now as it is, just for now, okay? Um, we're doing quite well. I have 30 minutes of recording time left. Ah, what will I do? We'll go and do this side here, will we? Wouldn't that be nice? Come on, let's do it. Let's go back to our big brush. Dampen that big brush. And let's go and get some crimson. Lots of crimson now, and plenty of turpentine in this as well. Okay? Crimson, um, I see burnt umber. I can see crimson and burnt umber, and I can see a hint of black in there. This is a very rich, dark color over here on this side, okay? And a hint of phthalo blue. Let me try this now. It looks dark, you see, but when it goes against the white canvas, it's actually not that dark, really. Let's caught in front of this now with the stack. In fact, I want a bit more blue in this. I want this to be, really, to be really dark in front of that misty hill there, you see? And go out like that and in. Now, look at that. So now we have already lovely distance, don't we, in this? It's been pushed way off into the distance. Isn't that just fantastic? Let's just put this very rich dark plummy kind of a color Pink, brown, little black. Let's go in here with that nice dark warm color. Fill this in. Okay, a bit more turpentine. Some blue, some crimson. Let's go up the top and just get the outline first now on this, yeah? And then we can soften it all together don't forget to add plenty, plenty of crimson into this. Plenty of crimson, plenty of burnt umber. A nice pinky, browny, blacky kind of a colour. That's what you want, okay? Right. And look, my brush strokes are going downwards at an angle to suggest the hill falling down in that direction, okay? Nice and dark hair. Right. How about that? That's a nice contrast now, isn't it? 
let's put a little bit of mist in here now actually before we do the mist i'm going to just take my medium stubby brush and just get some little bits of highlight here and there on this i'm going to take some phthalo blue some crimson and some white you could pretty much do this entire painting with those three colors crimson phthalo blue and a little bit of black you could really kind of do the painting with those three colors if you wished okay now i'm just going to put in a couple of lights with that light bluey kind of a color look just suggest a few kind of ridges here and there that's all see kind of flicking it down at a slight angle it's just to give uh, a bit of texture on the hill that's all We'll soften this in there now with our soft brush as well. Okay. Right. And then if you really want to do, if you want to really go crazy now with this and create like trees on the hill, all that kind of stuff, you could just do that with your kind of worn out flash brush I'm going to take some crimson some white a little hint of burnt umber and you could let me just put my palette down for a moment okay you could if you wanted just go along and give it this kind of a feeling okay like look kind of bushes rocks that kind of thing just giving it a nice rough textured kind of a feeling and that it kind of soften off here and there into the hill okay um do you know if you want to give it a bit more make it look a bit more detailed you could just go along and go like this here and there give the impression of a very um rough bushy kind of an area there's kind of bits of trees and plants and bushes and all that kind of stuff going up the hill you see just dab 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 very gently i'm hardly even touching the canvas in places but it just gives it a bit of texture you know let's take a bit of brown a bit of burnt umber okay uh, we could take a bit of crimson on its own just to mix it up a bit now it gets very very dark in here doesn't it i'm going to take some black and some brown and some blue and i'm going to go with that dark color down into the corner there okay you see just you know keep it simple try not to kind of go over the top with details you can if you like if you if you like to sit there for hours and hours pulling in little details that's great but i just don't have the patience i just i'm more of a free style kind of an artist i like to just make a nice impression of a scene um without putting in too much detail it's not that i can't put in detail or i don't like it i just don't have the patience but i just like this nice loose kind of a style um you know it it tells you what it is i think and it works for me i like i like this kind of painting now i'm just going to take my medium flat brush i'm going to get some black some crimson i'm going to go up here and just pull some of that down just to darken that up there just a little okay i'm going to darken it a touch uh let's take a bit of cadmium red with burnt umber i can make it a bit warmer there and there okay now again like what i did earlier on i'm just going to take some white and some crimson okay nice light pink maybe a hint of blue actually as well let's get loads of white into this now loads and loads of white and let's just again hit and miss okay you see it's just sort of catching catching some ridges here and there does that make sense it's just catching them 
And again, we won't go mad with this, we won't go crazy. This is just a little bit. And then I'm going to create some nice mist along the bottom. So with this little rough brush, any rough brush that you have, let's take some phthalo blue and some white and go down here and give this a nice misty kind of a feeling. Now initially it's going to mix into that dark colour, okay? And just give it a wipe on some tissue and then go back into some fresh colour. Okay, that's all you have to do. And go just to the edge, like so. I hope you enjoyed this part one of this tutorial. I certainly did. I had a great fun time doing this. I won't go too far with this episode. I'll just kind of leave it at this. Now I think we got a good bit done, didn't we? I think we're doing very well, in fairness. Um, if you're following along, I'm sure some of you are. I'm really proud of you, you're doing a fine job. You're really painting very well, so just keep it up, okay? Now, let me soften some of this. Make it nice and soft. I need to get a new soft brush because my soft brush is just not soft enough. Really, it's just not. Let's just flick it upwards gently into the hill and look at that now isn't that lovely a lovely little misty few hills in the distance i'm going to call that part one finished and i want to peel back this tape here just to show you what i mean we actually do have a couple of trees going along here should we put those in I never realised there was a couple of trees along there at the bottom. We'll, we'll, we'll put those in quickly. Come on, let's let's do it. Let's just go for some phthalo blue and some burnt umber. Okay. And a bit of black. They're very dark. And let's just go along like that. Look. Okay, I need a bit more black. I need to get more colour on my palette, actually. I don't have enough colour. I'm just going to dab them in like that. And go right over here. Okay. I will add a little touch of burnt umber to these because there, that is a very bluey greeny colour and it needs to be a lot darker than that really. So I'll just take a bit of burnt umber and let's just put a bit of burnt umber in there, look. There. Now doesn't that really make the mist behind stand out wonderfully, doesn't it? It really does. I'll take a little hint of black now, just for the very bottom of that, okay? A little bit of black, just along the base, look. And then, let's kind of soften this up into our hill. Look, so it disappears up into the hill here. Sort of just leave it allowed to kind of feather off up into the hill. Now, I'm going to peel off this little bit of tape that I have. Let me zoom back slightly, just so you can get a proper view. And I'll show you then what it looks like with the tape off. You see? Isn't that wonderful? Now we have a wonderful clean line. Isn't that beautiful? So I think we're coming on very, very nicely. Now there is some lights up here that I forgot to do. Again, this is a live um sure okay um you know there's no big editing in this so i forgot to do that let's do it i'm going to take a clean small brush and i'm just going to take a little bit of crimson and let me see now where are we going with this oh yeah we're just going there crimson little bit of naples yellow and i think safe enough to use that color 
Let's go up here and just create a little bit of light behind just there, okay? Let's soften it down with our fingers, look, just slightly. Already we have some light in the distance, isn't that wonderful? Let's try that again, look, yellow and crimson, cadmium yellow, or not, sorry, Naples yellow and a little crimson. And we'll just go down, create the ridge of that there, look, lovely. Leave it soften away. And then I'll take a small brush and I'll just suggest a little darker color, just here and there. That may be too dark. Let's just get a little bit of a, kind of a plummy sort of a color. You see, it's just giving it a little, just a little dark, that's all. And let's soften it down. And I think that's fine. That will do absolutely fine. So, my friends, part one is finished. Let me zoom right back here and let me move the camera back so you can see me next to the painting. Now, isn't that wonderful? There we are. Thank you so much. Um, part one finished. Stay tuned for part two coming up in a few days. I'm just uh, getting stuff sorted in my studio here. I'm pretty much finished, ready for Zoom. So I'll be contacting you very, very soon for that, okay? I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I think in other two parts we'll see this finished. So stay tuned. Do subscribe if you haven't done so. You're missing some fantastic painting. And keep it simple and enjoy it. Smile, enjoy it, drink lots of tea and coffee, okay? I'll see you next week. Thank you and God bless.